Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and today we're going to be taking a look at this Sonic Faction Probability Pack, which is a new pack that's just been released with Ableton 10 Live Suite. It's a collection of five Max for Live MIDI devices, which kind of all revolve around the same basic idea. Do you want that thing to happen all the time or 30% of the time? It's a kind of a simple idea, but these plugins take it to the next level. It's pretty nuts. There's multiple levels of randomization and probability and you can get pretty crazy with it. It kind of feels like you're giving the computer a set of rules and then the computer learns how to write a song, if that makes any sense. So let's check it out. All right, so I'm recording this tutorial before the pack has actually been released, but I believe if you go to packs and then down to available packs, you'll be able to download it from this list here if you have Ableton Live 10 Suite. So then it will appear up here. And as you can see, there's five Max for Live MIDI devices. So let's check out the step divider first. So this is essentially a step sequencer, but with many twists. <laughs> so the way a normal step sequencer works is if I place a note here every time this highlighted box reaches this location it'll play a c and we can change that note if we like but we'll just leave it at a c right for right now and there's eight different lanes so you can play eight different notes and conveniently that corresponds with the first eight notes in a drum rack but the really interesting thing about this is you can change the rate and the division so if i turn the rate up on this top lane suddenly you can see this highlighted box is going a lot faster than the rest of them you can also change the number of divisions so now so now there's less divisions and if you kind of just <laughs> put a bunch of random values in here, it starts to look pretty nuts. And once we get some sounds in here, you'll be able to hear what I mean. All right, so I've put a few sounds in this drum rack here. We've got eight sounds in the bottom. And then I've also got eight sounds in the drum rack, one octave higher. And you can see this is a C1. This is the C1 pad on the drum rack. And this is the C2 pad on the drum rack. So let's just play. We've got our sequence in. It's just scrolling between the first eight notes in the drum rack, which is cool. But over here on the probability section, we can turn this up to max. And what that's going to do is give a 50-50 chance that every time a note is triggered, for example, this C, it will choose between this note or one octave higher, that note. So let's play now. A little bit more interesting, <laughs> a little bit cooler. And if we had even more things in the drum rack to trigger, like C3, C4, we could give a, an equal chance of those playing as well, all the way up to, you know, five different sets of sounds, which is pretty cool. But for right now, we've just got two sets of sounds and it's going to choose 50-50 between each one. So let's mess around with the rates and the divisions. So we'll turn the rate on this lane down to four maybe. And let's go, let's go to like 16 on here. And I'm just gonna like, hey, we'll just do some random stuff here <laughs> and we'll just see what happens. Pretty weird stuff. Let's try hitting this randomize button. By the way, if you hold shift and then click on a division, you can split it into two notes, three notes, or maximum of four notes, which is pretty cool. And if you like a pattern, you can hold shift and click on one of these pads here and that will save the pattern. So let's randomize another pattern. <laughs> that one's pretty crazy. And we'll randomize another one and another one. I'm not even going to listen to them. Let's just see what happens. We'll save a bunch of them. So if we turn the sequencer on, you can set the direction and the rate at which it chooses a different pattern. So every half note, it's going to select a new pattern. And the way it selects a new pattern is determined by the direction. So it will either scroll to the next one and then start from the beginning again or go backwards through the patterns or go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards again. I'm not really sure how that one is different to the other one. And then just random. So let's set it to random and we'll play now. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. But I think I think it's going to sound better if we put some bass sounds in the drum rack. So let's try that out. So now that we kind of understand how the step divider works and all of its features, um, I didn't really talk about the rate and swing key and scale, but that's pretty self-explanatory. I've gone ahead and just randomized a few patterns and saved them into the pattern grid here. And I've also replaced our weird percussion sounds with cool bass sounds like this. And 
moment, I added a little reverb onto that one sound just to give it a little extra presence in case it is triggered randomly, it might sound cool. And I also put all of the chains, all of the pads and different sounds in the drum rack onto the same choke channel, which means that only one bass sound will be able to play at any given time. If a sample is playing and then another sample is triggered, they won't play over the top of each other. The first sample will get cut off and that's what the choke feature is all about. So I've got a little house beat here. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So <laughs> sometimes it sounds pretty cool, other times it sounds a bit weird and repetitive uh, or it just sounds like it's out of time. But I think there's definitely some inspiring kind of loops in there that we could harness. So I had an idea, we could add another bass channel in here and this is just like a serum playing like a distorted sort of saw, saw square wave uh, with an OTT and a compressor. and. Uh, this is uh, something similar, it's like a sub drop sort of sound. And my idea is to kind of just turn the step divider off and then only have it turn on in the gaps of our bass sound down the bottom here. So we'll just automate that, something like this. And let's take a listen to that. <laughs> So there you go, it's kind of a, a pretty sweet way to just add a couple of glitchy bass hits in between your main bass. So moving on, let's check out the probability art, which is my second favorite out of this pack. We've got an electric on this channel. Which sounds like a nice road sound with a reverb and we'll drag a probability up in so you can see the probability up is kind of split up into two sections you've got the chord section on the left and then the arp section with a probability matrix on the right i just made up that name by the way i don't know if that's if it's called a matrix or not so let's just hold down one key on the push here So you can see that it's automatically creating a major chord and then arpeggiating it according to the rate and different settings here. Uh, we can change the shape and give it a different chord like a minor ninth. And you can also invert the chord. Let's go with the third inversion, I think that sounds pretty cool. And by the way, before I move on any further, you can actually turn the ARP off and then set a strum value. Which can be quite nice to just give your chord a little bit more of a human effect. But moving back onto the ARP, uh, the first section we're going to talk about is this octave section. Holding down the same key on the on the keyboard or the push, whatever you're using, and then changing the octave value will transpose the whole situation up or down uh, an octave or so. And then over here on the probability matrix, cool name, <laughs> that's what we're calling it. You can set a range and then an amount. So this is kind of just going to give this chunk of information a random value. So let's set the range from like say zero to two and then we'll turn the amount up all the way and see what happens. I'm gonna push the same key on the push. So you can see 50% of the, well, 33 and a third. And then add 66 and two thirds percent. It's gonna be zero, one or two. And it sounds pretty sweet, but let's go with like a lower value. So you can see very occasionally one of those notes will be one or two octaves higher. I think around 50% will sound pretty cool. And then the length does exactly what you think it would do, it just changes the length of the MIDI notes. So let's randomize like a, a range of like this.
The only thing that I wish this plugin had was a visual representation of the ranges over here. You know, like in Serum where you have like that kind of blue curve around the knob so you can see how far the knob will move with an LFO or an envelope or something like that. That's what I really wish they built into this plugin. You've also got a bunch of different styles of arpeggiation as well, which are very similar to the ones that you can find in the um, Ableton arpeggiator. You know, you've got your up, down, your converge, diverge, that sort of thing. And there's also a chord trigger. So what sounds really cool is if you sort of set the style like range like this and then turn the amount up, hopefully occasionally we'll get a chord triggered. That might be a little bit too often, so I'm going to turn the amount down a bit. You can change the probability of the rate as well. But I find that having <laughs> three other things randomized and one stay constant can sound really good because too much randomization can sound a bit weird. So let's see how that sounds with our track over here. <laughs> So maybe we'll just write like a couple of MIDI clips in. And we'll just have the arpeggiation kind of happen like this. There's also a gate here, which is similar to a step sequencer. So you can turn off certain triggers. So the arpeggiator kind of mutes, which is pretty cool. You can get some interesting patterns like that. Let's try something like this. Let's turn the octave down one. So the step divider with the probability up, we've written one MIDI note and we've basically got a solid idea for a track started. Pretty crazy stuff. Probability pack by Sonic Faction definitely helps you think outside the box and try melodies and rhythmic patterns that you may not have thought of before. You know, we created the beginnings of a pretty cool track by only entering one MIDI note, which is pretty crazy to think about. And we only covered two out of the five plugins that are included. So hopefully this video has piqued your interest enough to check it out and play around with the other three. So cool. Thanks for watching. Peace.